So as legendary basketball coach John Wooden once said, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Now whether it's preparing for a basketball game, remembering to bring your umbrella when you're outside in Bergen, or building your pension fund for your retirement, preparation is often the key to success. But it's hard to do. And so how do we prepare when we don't have a coach or a partner to help us prepare? Hello everyone, my name is Michael Bacon. I'm here on stage with my colleagues Lynn Yuan, Sarah Pavlak, and Martin Maldonado, and together we're the Carroll Consulting Group. And we're excited to introduce D&D's latest innovation, Ella. It's a virtual personal assistant for banking that's gonna help young people better prepare for the future. But we wanna understand this journey of preparation. And currently in Norway, there's stress on the pension system that's increasing the need for private savings because we have an aging population that's lacking saving capabilities right now. But despite that, there's a lot of opportunity for D&D particularly as a bank that's seen as innovative, they can capitalize on the innovation to drive new resources for young people. But further along this journey, there's some behavioral challenges that young people are facing. There's uncertainty around the security of their investments and the promise for the future. And there's also gonna to have to make a trade-off between spending in the short term, but then saving for the long term. And then finally, there's urgency. Because there is that lack of savings, sometimes there's a demand for that short-term gain just to be able to make retirement. And so that's where Ella fits in. She's that personal assistant that's gonna be with young people throughout the entirety of their journey. She's gonna be there when you first meet her and learn about the pension system. She's gonna help convert you onto DMV's plat platform and to begin trading and begin building that for the pension system. And she's gonna be with you when you eventually retire and need to pull out some of those funds. And along the way, she's parallel with DMV's values. She's bold, she's personal and responsible. And then Martin's gonna share a little bit about what it's like to first meet Ella. So the first phase of implementing our strategy consists of exposure. And we really wanna leverage DNB's resources and network with universities to target the younger end of the broader age segment that we're aiming at, bringing into our clientele. And so with universities, what we plan to do is really look at students as a group that is broadly non-saving and convert them into smart savers. But we want to do this in an innovative way. And so partnering with companies such as the Finnish technology company Visor, we want to make sure that we bring in virtual reality to university campuses. And what this will do is allow students to visualize their financial goals. By being able to see how different saving and investing strategies affect their futures, Student will be able to gauge better how it is that saving benefits them in the short, medium, and long term. And building off this, with the infrastructure in place, DNB will be in a great situation to expand beyond university campuses, take advantage of the metropolitan areas surrounding universities, and expand into other public spaces with pop-ups, pop-up locations, and expand beyond the specific university segment into other uh, age brackets. Then we move on to the next phase, acquisition. And building on the strength of, of phase one, we'll be able to implement an incentivized referral program. And what this will do is give students the opportunity to expand their networks with their, with their peers. And so by expanding financial networks, students now have the ability to, co to cooperate with their peers in coming into our uh, broad uh, strategy for savings and investing for young, young people. And in doing so, we want to provide a financial incentive. And so by providing a free equity uh, in one of our mutual funds, we'll be able to allow students to build their financial networks in addition to build wealth as soon as the platform gets off the ground. And so now Sarah's going to talk to you a little bit about phase three of our strategy, retention. Thank you, Martin. So thus far, we've seen how DNB can leverage innovative technologies in order to increase excitement and awareness among our target population about the benefits of savings. But now that we've acquired these customers, how do we keep them? How do we cement their loyalty and make sure that they're banking with us, not just for a year or two, but for their entire lifetime? Introducing Ella, your personal umbrella, making sure that you're prepared for any kind of financial situation that may come your way. Ella is tailored to each individual based on their financial risk preferences, their timelines for investment, their financial literacy, and more. She's here with you every step of the way along your financial journey. Let's delve a little bit more deeply into what she can do. 
On Ella's home screen are easily digestible graphics that demonstrate how you're trending towards saving towards your goals, whether they be short-term, such as your first home, or long-term, such as retirement. Ella also sets reminders about savings and reminders about how, you are, how your spending is related to your budgets, making sure that you're being a smart spender and a smart saver. Furthermore, Ella not only shows you how much you've saved, but she gives you an idea of how you're allocating your savings among your goals, for both in the short term and in the long term. Importantly, short term goals are customizable, meaning I can choose if I want to save towards my home or my car, but long term goals such as life insurance and retirement are mandatory on Ella's screen, meaning that as people are saving now, they're encouraged to think beyond the short term and always see these life insurance and retirement goals. Ella also provides recommendations on how you should be allocating your savings among these different buckets based on the timeline to your goals. Additionally, she tells you how your savings are related to personally, um, potentially emergency situations such as losing your job, making sure that no matter what financial difficulty you face, you're always prepared and giving you that satisfaction and comfort. Further, Ella is with you in big and small decisions in life. So you can consult Ella when making large life choices such as that new home. While that mansion beachfront might look attractive now, Ella will guide you towards the smarter financial decision. Now, as Michael previously noted, currently over 78% of people are non-savers, and a large factor in this is because they think that saving for tomorrow means giving up some kind of enjoyment today. We want to transform this mindset. So Ella has a functionality that, if enabled, will allow you to round up your purchases to the next full crown amount and allocate this difference into the long-term investment or pension fund of your choice. In this way, you can continue to spend, but also save small increments, which over time add up to large amounts. Now, one thing that we think young people care about and are passionate about is social issues, um, and they have deep core values and missions. We want to leverage this to increase loyalty and give young individuals the opportunity to invest in causes they're passionate about. Whether that be the environment, education, empowerment of females, for example, individuals can select the causes that they care about and put their money towards this. In this way, we think that loyalty for individuals in DMV will increase. And we think it's smart because 70% of young people think or have reported that they really care about social causes and want their investment decisions to reflect this. Now, Martin touched about a referral program that'll bring people together that have smart that have financial goals that are similar. But we want to take this a step further and make Ella social and build a community. So on Ella, you can friend your peers and your relatives. You can form groups with your family members or those with similar investment goals um, or values, such as the environment. And you can see how your current savings match up to someone of um, comparable status. So for example, the same gender income level. You can also update your social your groups on when you hit your savings goals, such as, I just reached 100% of my savings for the new house, and you can like other people's statuses when they similarly hit their goals. In this way, you're making your goals uh, more visible, and you're more accountable and likely to stick to them. We also think that this social group transforms people from strictly extrinsic motivations, such as money, to intrinsic, such as sense of belonging in communities. And finally, Ella is personalized to you. One thing we saw is that people really want products and information that are tailored to them, and currently only 50% of people say that they're getting this. Um, we believe that Ella is the right move because Ella will help people to invest in the decisions that are right for them based on their financial literacy, their investment timelines, their risk preferences, but also how they're interacting with the app. So the questions they're asking Ella, the goals that they're setting to save for, and in this way, Ella's smart technology will continue to grow with you no matter what stage of your life you're in. So now we've seen what Ella can do for you, and we're going to talk about how Ella can be used to bring up the next generation of smart investors and savers. Thank you, Sarah. So at DMB, we understand that journey in life is long. And today, we invite you to think long, fast, and slow with us about the future. So for most individuals, their most important investment in life is often not that sport car or that beachfront mansion, but their future, their kids. So that's why we also want to introduce you to Meet Out, a virtual digitalized play date for your kids to educate kids as young as five about financial literacy. At DMB, we understand that 
we have to invest into our future, into our future generation, and financial literacy and financial responsibility, there is no age limit to start that education. So we are not only here to create a culture, but also pass down a culture and tradition of financial responsibility, cementing that trust with our current customers and expanding that trust beyond their families. So now we have talked about the strategy of implementing Ella. We're now gonna talk about how this implementation is actually gonna take effect. So first, we're gonna use a kind of lean methodology to design our product that's the LA development phase. Then we're gonna move forward to the what's the future marketing phase. First targeting university students while simultaneously collecting that data in real time. Sending that data back to the teams at DMB so they can immediately start to improve the next iteration of the product. And we believe this timeline is very feasible for the five year frame. And moving forward, we understand DMB will also responsible for our shareholders. And Ella will generate a net positive MPV of over 100 million crores in the five year period. In addition, it has a positive ROI return on investment of 13.77%, which is higher than the average projects at DMB. So of course, any project comes with risk, but we're also here to help you mitigate these risks. So for Ella, we have come down to these brackets of risk. There are financial risks, there are market risks, there are cyber risks, and there are comp comp risk from competition. However, for market and regulatory risks, we recommend performing more stringent due diligence to ensure that our data and our information is up to date with trends and market performances. For cyber risk, because of DMB's unique position within the innovative innovation network, we recommend partnering with more firms that has its niche in the cybersecurity uh, realm and work with them to build that, that infrastructure in order to implement Ella. Additionally, for competitive risk, we're gonna implement some sort of agile methodology to ensure that we're always at the forefront of the technology. So now I'm gonna pass it on to Michael who's gonna close this presentation. Wonderful, so we think that Ella as a whole creates value because it meets all of the key components of DMB's strategic vision. Such that when we think of the journey as a whole for the consumer that's using Ella, while DMB is there for you, Ella's gonna be there with you. She's gonna be bold, she's personable, and she's responsible. Bold in the way that DNB is gonna invest in the latest of AI technology, machine learning, but personal in the way that we use that technology to be human-centric, so that these innovations are dealing with the person as a whole first. And finally, she's responsible, both in the way that we encourage sustainability in our investing, but the way that it does so that meets the needs of each individual as they plan for a key point in their life, retirement. And this matters because failing to prepare is preparing to fail. The journey of retirement and pension building is a tough one. It can be a lot of ups and downs, and it's very personal and private. But with Ella, we can make it sustainable, we can make it fun, and we can make it exciting. And for that, we welcome you, and we're excited to introduce you so that you can meet Ella. Thank you. Now we'd love to field any questions. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for a great presentation. I'd like to meet Ella, definitely. Uh, one of the hard things is actually to get the young people's attention. Could you please elaborate on that? How do we get that to happen? How do we get their really attention and to act on their atten uh, the, the attention? Thank you. Absolutely. So. Research shows that young people are engaging with digital forms of advertising and marketing more than ever before. And so this is where our impulse from using more innovative forms of, of digital technology such as virtual reality come into play. We're betting on the idea that for young people, being able to engage with these technologies and interact with them personally will drive them into the direction of paying attention to your products. which. Uh, in traditionally have not been a fun uh, process for young people to engage in. And so actually by bringing in visual content, by showing people how their alter alternatives change, how their careers progress, once they're already uh, start, once they have just started out, 
This gives them tangibility, and so that is where part of the, uh, part of the attention grasp happens. And then we also have this idea of virality and a virality effect. And with a referral program and word of mouth, the idea is that there's a domino effect. And so uh, once someone's initially hooked, there is an effect that happens from social pressure. And so we're really betting on this idea that uh, if, if some peers are able to share a new type of technology that is, uh, it, that is interactive and that is community-centered, uh, we, we will have the ability to spread virally, not just within university walls, of course, but really spread beyond that into people's personal networks. That includes their siblings, their friends that maybe chose different career paths and did not go to university, and their, the, their family. So, um, you know, if anyone wants to elaborate, but I hope that answers the question. Hi, thank you for a great presentation, guys. Um, so, on the community platform that you're proposing, how do you um, foresee getting an influx of clients coming in? Do you see any linkage to social media or anything like that? And how about stickiness, getting people to stay on, stay on it and keep going? How do you engage them over time? So, I can take that, I guess. Um, so we really see the community network, as Martin mentioned, as the ability to expand past your walls. We think virtual reality is a great pr place to start. Um, and Martin mentioned that Visor is a company we were thinking of partnering with. One of the benefits of Visor is that once you have virtual reality, um, they also are innovating in a platform that allows you to see it mobily as well. And in creating your mobile spaces, they have the technology to share it to your social media sites. So we think, um, while it starts with an L, you can share your dreams with your other resources on social media, and that'll help it to spread as well. And I will just elaborate on um, how to kind of retain your customers to keep them in the DMB family. So that's why we create a project of Ella. And when Ella comes in place, it's not just an interface on your phone but we're envisioning more kind of a personal assistant, virtual assistant that's here with you every step of the way. So for instance, we're gonna use what's your future marketing campaign to first grasp their attention, then they're gonna update their app, and include, which includes this interface. They're gonna start using that interface for very mundane daily tasks, such as opening a savings account, uh, opening, seeing how that um, savings bucket works, and then slowly when they're taking out their first mortgage or receiving their first deposit check from their first uh, career, then they can start seeing how they can save that money towards their account. And while they're advancing to the next stage of life, starting a family, let's say, and uh, envisioning their future, that's why we also have L, kind of like a mini version of Ella. So Ella is really here with you, entire, uh, your entire life journey and for your family. Yeah, so from your presentation, it seems that your main target group is university students. Yeah, so uh, I'm just wondering, like, in terms of profitability, do you think they are the most ideal group to, to target at, or do you have alternative suggestions? Right. So uh, that's a really good point. And I would say that's definitely a trade-off we had to decide when we first decided to target the university segment. We are, I think the primary reason why we're targeting them is because they are most receptive to new technology. So if you look at like kind of a new product development curve, they're the first ones that's willing to use a product and give you feedback. And moving to, uh, and adding on to that is that university students usually have very high earning potential in life. Uh, and after that, what, after that graduation period, uh, and they start saving um, with their income coming in. So when we're building our financial models, we actually take into consideration, like for instance, recommending how, what's the percentage of their first paycheck coming in would, come, would go into um, the savings account and how DMB would be able to use that and encourage them to make trades and then thus incur profits. And to elaborate just a little bit more, the idea behind uh, reaching out to universities is really rooted in having some type of mobile marketing infrastructure. Uh, and so what this means is using, t uh, using kind of supporting technology, such as RVs, for example. And so with having, having RVs and having VR sets that uh, give us the ability to use pop-up locations at universities, we can really 
leverage that and expand into the metropolitan areas surrounding universities. And so we hit the universities as, initial, uh, as an initial target. But having a mobile uh, marketing, marketing infrastructure allows us to expand beyond that into age groups that are, are critical for DNB, uh, but are also accessible using, using these types of infrastructures. I'm thinking a bit about consumer behavior, because what we've seen as change is, I mean, 10, 20 years ago, you would maybe choose your bank and you would keep it all through your life. And this concept of lifelong, <laughs> you know, use of the or loyalty that you are, are, are aiming to create here. I'm, I'm very surprised that this comes from young people like yourself. So you really believe that we as a bank could create this lifelong loyalty? And uh, what, what would be really the critical factors to be able to do that? Sure, so I think one of the things that's interesting, right, is that I mean, even as young people, we admit that we like change, right? We like to be moving, adapting. Uh, but our belief is that the Yale experience is changing and that because it's using the, the latest of, of virtual reality of machine learning, that the way that I interact with when I first become a customer is gonna be very different than five years down the line. So we think that yes, because people are changing in their mindset and behavior, that's actually an opportunity. It's a chance to capitalize and be the leader and, and the forefront of the industry in terms of how we target our messaging and our interaction with that app so that our experience as a whole is changing and it's best fit to our needs because if we get people in Ella first from the beginning, We'll be able to collect the most data on them and their personality and their preferences compared to competitors so we can better enhance the experience for them. I also think that loyalty is significantly increased um, or it's been shown that companies that value corporate social responsibility have significantly higher levels of loyalty and I think that by DNB putting forth options that align with young people that'll help to cement that relationship between the young individual and DNB for not just a few years but these are causes that they care about for their lifetime typically so that should hopefully keep them engaged as well. Um, according to um, social responsibility, do you see any uh, threats regarding um, you are taking these out to university and, 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 and students? And um, do you have any thoughts about um, the groups that are not adapting this, the groups that are not going to university, that the difference between high income and low income um, people when they go to work will Will this increase this difference, or do you think this, how, how do you think about that? Right, I think um, that's definitely in our mind, that, that kind of uh, paying attention to the inequality uh, when we're designing this ally experience. And I think we, first we use the university students as a, as a testing ground, because for instance, bringing the virtual reality, that comes a lot of logistical preparation as well. For instance, renting the van, kind of tweaking the exact right kind of messaging. Like for instance, what color the van, what kind of things that we need to set up, how many people we need to hire on the team, how many VR sets we need to bring. So there's a, a lot of logistical um, planning behind this. And we think that first, by targeting universities, we can kind of have a small sample pool of how that's gonna be able to carry out. And once we have a very mature operation plan, then we can take that uh, mobile marketing strategy and take that RV van or any other like mobile marketing team and bring them to, for instance, the city center of Bergen or the city center of Oslo and set up like, you know, a, a kind of one day, four to eight hour uh, kind of virtual reality experience. And of course, because of these bustling city centers, there's a lot of traffic, that's definitely also gonna grasp people's attention and make sure that not just university students, but also people from all backgrounds understand of this technology. I will say too, I think that there are differences in potentially um, university students and non in terms of education levels and financial literacy. And we've taken that into consideration with Ella. She's designed for the beginning investor that doesn't know anything. She adjusts the language um, that she's using and the sophistication of the terms to make sure that it's easily digestible for people that don't have any kind of background in this versus potentially university students that are higher, um, more highly educated or have more experiences in this area. Um, Ella can provide more tailored language and as you grow and become more financially literate, she adjusts that as well throughout your whole journey to financial literacy. The question goes along the, the idea of creating this social network with Ella. So you are incorporating in this Ella 
all these social components of uh, sharing and making visible their achievements and, and so on and so forth. So one of the concerns uh, with DMB is what happens if Facebook or Google or all these giants jump into the business? How is Ella going to be making a difference for, for DMB to protect uh, the, the niche from that? Yeah, I think one potential difference is that we are saying that you should build your community with your peers, but another thing is that you should build your community with your family as well. Um, and so while Facebook might be targeted specifically to younger generations, I think within Ella, um, you also have your parents that are on this platform that are connecting to you and helping to support you in your savings. Um, and I think that that's a unique differentiator in the way that we're building our communities is potentially more family-oriented or family-centric, and I think that that um, will help potentially to differentiate us. And in addition to that, well, we still have this idea of incorporating components where people have access to groups with people with similar like-minded savings and investment goals. And what that means is people will be able to share information about the types of investment products or saving products or pension products that they're investing in. We have to take into account that this is a banking platform. This is not, you know, I, people are probably not going to be sharing cat pictures uh, or baby pictures on this platform. But that being said, there's still a social element and there's still conversations that have to be had surrounding money and there's a community uh, component to that. So without going the full Facebook and Instagram route, we still want to be able to, for customers to have a, a space to have dialogues, um, taking into consideration that banking is just part of life. Uh, and at, at some point, some, everyone is going to need a bank account and everyone's going to need a savings account and people are going to need to invest in their retirement. And so we kind of take in the strong elements of the social media uh, industry and, and we think that particularly with this tailored strategy, we, we take advantage of our own strengths and uh, provide them as services and products to our customers. Okay, maybe a final question for me. Uh, you have a very precise cost estimate for what this is going to uh, cost us, which is good. Um, and a lot of people say that, well, new technology is cheaper and it's easier to adapt, etc., etc. Our experience is that also these new technology projects are uh, running over budget and becoming massive. And what is your proposal so we make sure that we get this into the market in, in, in a proper time and also don't uh, lose control of the cost and the development? I think I can speak a little bit on the management issue, but I wanted Lynn to speak first about the cost issue. Sure. So I think just like um, the technology industry right now is innovating really fast, really rapidly. Everyone is trying to stay on the edge. And that's why we kind of want to learn from the startups that we are working with right now and their lean methodology to make sure that we're now creating a perfect Ella. That's the first edition. But we're starting with minimal viable product. Something that's functional, something that's already meeting the consumer needs that we have identified and roll them out immediately. So we can start collecting the data and improve upon that. And I think in addition to that, Michael here can talk more about how we can use the agile methodology to improve the process. Sure, I think one of the things that we really enjoy getting to know is that right at DNB as a whole is becoming increasingly agile, not only the way they operate, but from a management standpoint. And so for us, that's a great way to how do we manage these business issues of cost with the tech development, the side of being iterative and innovative. And so for us, right, when we look at our timeline, yes, there's an upfront cost we're gonna need to make, but it's through innovating as a whole and being agile on the process that we can manage that cost. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>